Hey, it's Thursday. It's the CMO platform meeting. We should uh, we should get started. So um, there's an Etherpad. I put it in pound sumo. Um, does anybody need me to do that again? We might as well do it again so we. All can right, one more time. Stragglers, I, I'm in there, but. Uh, there it is in pound sumo again. Um, we had no previous action items last week. Um, everybody was at another meeting. Um, so here's uh, the first thing on the list was, so we made, uh, we made lots of changes. I've talked to Kadir a little bit about this this week. I don't know that there's a, a great answer yet, but um, just we should discuss this. So we made a whole bunch of changes on the site over uh, during Q2 um, based on, on stuff that, that um, you guys figured out when you met in London back in Q1. Um, but we, uh, we reworked the, the IA, we put uh, articles in a single topic or subtopic, um, we created new topic and subtopic pages, we removed the site-wide nav bar with new product icons, we removed the OS and version selector for people who are not logged in. Um, we removed the task base start uh, from uh, support.mozilla.org. Um, and I was asking, uh, basically, how are we doing? What, what has that gained us? I mean, the site looks nicer, makes more sense to me. Um, um, is this is this helping or do we we can't really measure this until we have a new product page and I see someone just could here put in a link here but that I guess that question is for Kadir or Ebi or Ricky or all of you guys right um, so I can try to address this uh, one of the things that I was preparing for for this change was the uh, a custom report on Google Analytics to track how we are doing, how are people. So from the product pages and the article, uh, the from the product and topic landing pages, what we wanted to have is we wanted to have more people go from landing on the product page to reading an article because it's useless if they drop off on the product landing page or on the topic landing pages those pages don't have content. They can't help anyone. Uh, so they need to go on an article or to a forum thread to get help. And that's the whole uh, goal. That was the whole goal of, of making those changes. Um, so I do, have a, I do have that metric, but uh, this week I actually should be trying, or I, I am trying to figure out if this is the right one. And uh, I don't have a final result on that yet. Um, so hopefully within a week or so I can give more information about that. But that's only about the topic and subtopic planning uh, pages. It doesn't cover the navigation bar or product icons uh, version selector. I think we should have different, um, yeah, those need different uh, evaluations. Well, those were just about removing confusion, right? Which would contribute to I think people. So ending oh. up on in the right place right but I don't I haven't actually looked into uh, how to measure that uh, measure any of that I'm not sure by did you have did you look into that no so Kadir what is this link that you just put in there so that's the custom report that I have for tell which is telling me how many people are landing on product slash Firefox. So we are just looking at that as a proxy for the other um, uh, for the other flows. And how many of those actually uh, end up uh, reading an article? Um, and if we are doing our job well, then more people, uh, after the changes that we make, more people should end up reading an article percentage. That's the idea behind it. It's a, the idea is pretty simple. Uh, it's 
you have an input, but you want to maximize the number of uh, the percentage of that input that lands on an article. That's the metric. Uh, so, but I don't have. Uh, I'm still figuring out whether the, 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 that report is working right, and uh, whether those numbers are trustable. So I don't want to announce anything yet. Hopefully, in the meeting next week. But that's what I'm currently looking at. So, what, and, and that's what I I took a screenshot of that. Uh, but I don't. I can't. I'm trying to figure out how that thing works. What would I be looking at? This is saying that. So essentially, that uh, three million nine hundred thousand. I think that of, you need to do a show, right? What's Can that? Can you say it again? I, my connection is terrible. Boom. Okay. Uh, yeah. So. How you read this is uh, essentially the blue line is how many people are landing on product slash Firefox. That is one of our product landing pages. And uh, the orange line uh, is, so I'm just looking at the uh, in, in product users there. Um, so what you see here uh, as, uh, what is it called? And excuse me, I actually took a screenshot and uh, wasn't the right one, just a okay. second. Uh, Sorry about that. Just let me break that. Okay. I'm putting this on the Etherpad again, uh, changing the URL there. Okay, so if you click through to this, uh, let me also put this on the uh, on IRC and pound sumo. Uh, so you you two you see two different uh, scales there. One of them is the total visitors that are landing on product slash Firefox, and then you see the so that's the dark blue, mm -hmm. and then you see the light blue, and I don't. Know why they decided to do this color scheme, uh, but um, that's the other one is uh, how many people are landing, on, people are reading an article or a forum thread, landing on an article or a forum thread. So, um, and the difference between those two is how many people we are losing along the way. Uh, so they land on product slash Firefox, but they don't end up reading an article or a forum thread, which is bad because that means. They couldn't have gotten help from us. But those That's lines look like they're almost on top of one another. But when you look at those numbers below, it looks yeah. much different. That's why I said they, those are two scales. Uh, one, of, one of the scales is on the left-hand side, and the other scale is on the right-hand side. Uh, if you look at the numbers there, you will see that Crazy. they're different. OK. Oh, so those so two you lines see that are the dark at two different scales. Yes, exactly. So oh, the dark crazy. blue one is, for example, th that the peak there is at 200,000. And the light blue one, the peak is at 40,000. Oh, so they have almost the same shape. But the blue line, Ye if you were looking at the yeah. left-hand scale, would be about <laughs> about uh, uh, one quarter of the... It, yeah, I'm really sorry about that because it's... Um, I don't know. I, I can't seem to change that uh, the the coloring. I don't know why they choose that coloring because it's kind of confusing. Yeah. Uh, but but you get what. But it would be like about. move that light blue line way down there, like halfway between the bottom line and the hundred thousand line, and then they would be sharing the same scale. Right. Yeah. 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 So the the goal is to increase uh, the. The uh, light blue line. Right. So the light blue line should go up. That would be positive. Uh, and it should essentially be so ideally, our ideal case is that the light blue line overlaps with the dark blue line and they use the same scale. Right. That's it's, the ideal case. It's just confusing because it looks like, oh, it does overlap the blue line. But yeah, they're yeah. on two different scales. That's, yeah. 
but but the numbers are right there, so there there is no confusion about the numbers. Okay. So it's hard to tell. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't particularly is does it is it going up? We can't tell right now. Yeah, I, I like I said, I don't want to make any. Uh, I I don't want to draw any conclusions yet. Okay. Because I still have to verify the validity of the data, uh, just cross-checking, um, making some sanity checks, uh, whether the uh, views that we are seeing here, they make sense, or the visits that we are seeing here make sense or not. Um, so I, I will report back next week on um, the findings here. That's where I am right now. Okay. Anybody have questions about that? Other things to say about and it? This whole infographics thing is a scam. Okay. No, it's pretty cool, but yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on to the next thing, WebMaker. So um, if you don't know, we've been talking about integrating WebMaker help in Sumo, like as another product or another series of products, maybe. Um, so we should talk about this because we haven't talked about this in a platform meeting yet. Um, uh, Ibai, you, you want to say anything about this? Give people background? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can. So basically, a couple of weeks ago, the people from the foundation uh, contacted us because they were looking for a place where they can start putting the help content for their webmaker products. And we say, sure, why not? Because what they're, they, they're basically expanding. Now webmaker.org is ma mainly a service for, for user generated content with all, all their the three main products and and basically they're starting to receive questions already they 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 are doing that over email they don't have a they don't have help content they don't have faqs they don't have where to put it they don't have an infrastructure they don't they don't have a forum uh, as we do and they they were really excited to to be part of the sumo family so i i just want i mean I thought that it was a good idea. I shared that on the contributors forum. It seems that everyone is as excited. So now it's just a matter of going ahead and, and doing it. They're going to be helping us. They have resources to, to create content, to help in the forum. It's just that they need a platform and a little bit of uh, hand holding in the process. Yep. Um problems or opportunities. I was trying to think of, of these, like, I mean, it's it just, I think it's a, like we've talked about in the contributor forum. I mean, I think it's a, it's a great idea. It makes sense. Um, and um, um, I think n there can be nice cross pollinization for both contributors mm -hmm. and users. Um, so, you know, you're getting help with Firefox. Hey, there is this other thing, this webmaker thing. You may you may come into contact with that while you're getting help at, at Sumo, or vice versa, right? That can't hurt, um, or at least I would hope it would not hurt. But also uh, contributors, I would imagine that that people who help Firefox users will at some point end up helping webmaker users, um, and vice versa. The people who who are there to help webmaker users may end up helping Firefox users. Exactly. Yeah. And I just want to say that there, just like we have uh, three products in varying stages of maturity ex currently in Sumo. So we have desktop, which I don't think anyone will argue is a mature product. So its needs are different. We have Android, which I argue is more like Windows 3, not quite Windows 95. Awesome, but like Windows 95 was super awesome, and we're getting to the super awesome stage slowly in Android. And then Firefox OS is like the iPhone 2G, full of promise, but minimally useful. 
they have the same thing. So we can't treat the web maker as an as a, a unified, coherent set of products. From trying to teach kids how to use the web maker products at a Vancouver Maker Fair, their most mature product is popcorn, which is the video remixer. It's awesome. Um, so that's the closest thing to desktop. And then X-ray goggles is older, but there's still some bugs in it. I don't know what that would be mapping to in our existing product family. Uh, and uh, I definitely think that um, if we're going to add WebMaker, what's it called? Thimbo, which is their web editing program. It's more like Firefox OS. It's minimalistically useful. It's not a full product yet. So we, if we do take WebMaker on, we should just make sure that we know what the what types of products and what stages of maturity they are in so we can adjust our expectation appropriately like appropriately like we do for our three existing products. But I yeah, I mean in general I think it's a good idea. I don't know from a platform point of view how much work that is for Ricky's team. Ricky's eating a sandwich or I don't see him. Well that reminds me while we're talking about that, um, and while you're talking is the the uh -huh. Thunderbird integration. Oh, yes, Thunderbird. Thought, well, what what's uh what's the story on that? I thought there was like um I mean one of the things was we didn't want to spend a lot of resources doing it, but w w there was some like uh there was some prerequisite, right? We had to um uh right. so, have uh, uh, there support is for the Thunderbird show for or something. Correct. So, um Sankas, the web developer, hasn't had time. It's the kind of thing you can't do in half an hour or an hour. And it's not rocket science, but it's sort of, what would the word be? Crufty logic to put in Shopper for Thunderbird to coexist with the crufty logic for Firefox Shopper. So we haven't done that. That is the only thing, because we can't put Thunderbird articles into Sumo right. without that, because otherwise you're going to, yeah. No, they won't work. Yeah. So I'm hoping um, to be in Toronto in August and to personally uh, sit with Sankas at his desk in the Toronto office and make him do this or <laughs> uh, buy him chocolate. I hear he likes chocolate. So because okay. really it's one of my goals to get this done before the end of the year, Michael. But uh, so show for is the code wise. Right? right. And then the second thing is we would do a test migration to Amazon just because I'm paranoid. Probably don't need that. <laughs> Um, and then the third thing is we would migrate it. So um, once we get the show for done, then I would negotiate time with Kadir and the rest of the team to get some, because we I think Ricky would still have to do some minimal amount of work to support kind of our TV articles, which would be the same work we do for WebMaker. Yeah. Right, I guess. Right? For, the th for their one to three products, depending on how which product they want us to support. So we might have the same problem with WebMaker. We might have a show for for webmaker i don't know i haven't gone there I oh actually. I lord i hope not no i don't think so <laughs> i hope not they don't have a six-week release they're web apps yeah. right they're, they're, yeah, awesome. they're web apps they're web... Yeah, yeah yeah hit yeah. refresh say, you no, have the new version software. everybody's up exactly. everyone's on the latest every week and cool. the thing is that it doesn't need to be perfect right so yeah. we'll launch yeah. and we'll iterate as we as we go uh, I think the ultimate message here is that it should be it should be almost no work for us. As long as we don't break desktop and Android. Right, as long exactly. As we don't alienate our contributors, right, Rosanna? Um, Sorry, I was muted. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, certainly. Ah, so, um, I, I, no, I think that, that you know, uh, we just have to find out the ways of not um, overwhelming contributors that have been maybe contributing to say desktop for a long time and they wish to continue there and they don't have time to commit to other projects, yeah. products. And so it's, it's, it's sort of like it's finding a balance but I also think that there's a lot of opportunity in cross-pollinating uh, communities and you know we're just all a big part of Mozilla and I think that for a lot of people it will come natural um, to just want to you know 
try to do things in other projects. So, so I think it's 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 um it's definitely an opportunity, um, but at the same time we have to figure out how to not overwhelm people who had just who have just a limited amount of of time, right? So that they're uh, they can focus and not have to deal with all the noise around it. That's I think uh, what we can think about. Yeah, so I think we, we really need to manage uh, our, the pressure we're putting out there uh, so that a lot of contributors don't feel this kind of pressure, that they need to do something or that they have to get involved if they don't want to. So it's basically just something we're doing and whoever has time and wants to do it and is interested and is excited, go ahead. But it doesn't, it's not something. So who are our contacts? Who are the uh, drivers on the webmaker side for working with Sumo? So we have Michelle here in the Berlin office uh, that okay. Rosanna already talked to. And I guess there are like more people spread everywhere, but like our definite contact is here in Berlin that we already know. Michelle, what's her last yeah, name? Yeah. Michelle Thorne. Michelle Thorne. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. right. She's awesome. So yeah, so I, I think as I told you, I think I think there's there's huge opportunity also because I think the, the, the web maker community is as a you know, it's a younger community in the terms of, you know, like there's a lot of, of young people because the tools they, they, they work for, you know, the, the, the tools that they're developing also aim you know, younger people. They're very event focused, which is something that we can, you know, learn from and maybe we can leverage also. And I think that there are many areas where, you know, we can we can work together and 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 you know learn from each other so so i think it's a great opportunity and, and just as madalena said you know it's just uh making sure that our you know faithful uh, contributors uh don't get overwhelmed because you know there's a lot of work getting done you know like more products uh faster releases um there are many things changing right so we just want to make sure that everyone feels comfortable and that, that there's not too much pressure yeah and if they're a web app they could just stick changes in any time, so we 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 have we might have to like be, change our behavior in terms of documenting if they're going to be like sticking in major features not at the six week cycle but at some other cycle. But we'll we'll get there. I mean that's not a big deal, right? Right. I mean it, it just and the idea will be there'll be different people to handle that. Just like I mean Firefox OS changes at a different pace than Android and desktop. Only Android and desktop are synced. Is that, I yeah. guess, the big thing. Cool. Anything else about WebMaker? I guess maybe we should invite them to this meeting once things get serious. Yep. <laughs> I, I don't like to get serious, but at some point we all have to. <laughs> Well, we will no, probably we have some meetings with them at a certain point, so. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I, I, the who's, who, so I have a question then, who's driving the web maker for us? So that's a, from our, that's oh. a goal for this quarter. Eby, I guess we haven't settled on this. Is, is this you and me supporting you on yeah. that or? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, uh, as I say, shouldn't be a, a big thing. This is uh, a low investment, low priority for, for us, used basically hand holding them a little bit. So as far yeah. as I can tell, the only thing, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go for it. As far as I can tell, the only thing uh, that this will um, make a priority is making it easier for people to see what kind of questions are being asked in the forums. Uh, Bram is a good suggestion for that. I think we will probably go with that uh, unless someone has a better one. Uh, there is a bug for that, which oh, let me see if I can find if anyone is interested in that kind of thing. Uh, I'll post it in either path. Okay. So the one that you, okay. I, I already looked at that. That is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only thing that I can think of that will uh, that we will need to make, but we need to make that change anyway because we already need that for. Uh, the separation of Firefox, Firefox OS, and Android mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. Um, this kind of stuff is always great to also show us where we have our shortcomings because we need to support different products on our platform anyway. So yeah. anytime we run into a problem, that's already a problem for us uh, just for the Firefox part of it. Right. 
we can learn from that. And also, the I mean, the like e bike pointed out. I mean, the good news is we already do support multiple products. We already did that work. I mean, maybe there are yeah. the niceties, yeah. right? The like, oh, it would be awesome if we also did this little piece. But we but we already did uh, uh, the, all that work for Firefox OS. So. OK. Um, I have this question that um, our Italian localizers brought up uh, this morning. They were localizing Ooh. a page on Mozilla.org, and uh, it had a hard-coded uh, ENUS link in it, and it also oh. had an, an anchor. Uh, it was also an anchor link, and the anchor part wasn't right. So, um, you know, I, I said in response, I mean, that's just that's a mistake. I always stress in bugs and in email that, you know, when you are uh, linking to Sumo documents to leave out the locale and, and Sumo will figure that out. Um, but um, uh, Simone also asked, are, don't we have a, shouldn't we be able to find um, like incoming links to anchors that are broken? Uh, you don't get a 404, I guess, but you do end up at the top of the page. Um, is there any, so I'm not quite sure, is there any way to tell? Like, is there any way for us, his concern was, there are probably other links that are not right out there. How can we find them without just <laughs> checking every link that we can find? Uh, I mean, for the language, we can look into the logs if anyone is coming with ENUS, but there will be a lot of uh, false positives. Uh, the other thing with the anchor, I have no idea. Ricky, do you... I don't even know if that's possible. Oh, so what do you mean the anchor? So, for instance, in this, in this Mozilla.org page, instead of like pound W underscore, it had like pound and then the name of the section. You know what I mean? So the anchor oh, was, that, didn't work. Yeah. Um, is there any way to like find people who are clicking on those kinds of things coming to Sumo from those kinds of links so that we can find out what links are broken like that in that way? I'm imagining uh, not because they don't get 404s. It's not like it'll register as a 404, right? Nope. It doesn't even um, get sent to the server to the server the the anchor. Mm. And Kadir, what were you? Never doing? heard of anyone being. I, I've I've never heard of anyone being able or or tracking. I've never heard of any of that. So, and as Ricky said, this is not being sent to the server. So this is not something that the server even knows about. It's handled in the browser completely. Mm. There might be a way. I don't know. There might, but I'm pretty sure it will be really involved and probably not worth the effort because they landed on the right article, just not in the right section. Right. Uh, so, because there is the table of content, they they would not be totally lost. Mm. I don't think it's worth the effort digging into that, figuring that out. Yeah, I think I mean mainly the effort is in the stressing always in bugs the correct way to link to Sumo uh, yeah. from web properties, and I guess a double check when you are doing things like localizing and you say, "Hey, you guys actually messed it up." <coughs> The other thing about the locale, Kadir, you thought maybe there was something, but maybe not. Well, the thing is, uh, incoming links with ENUS are not necessarily wrong, uh, especially when they come from in product, they are right. Um, so we would have to distinguish those from that are mistakenly. Uh, that are mistakenly using the uh, lo locale code in the URL. So we will probably run into a lot of 
false positives, figuring that out. Yeah, um, I think that also seems like very hard to figure out. Yeah, also because it's technically not the correct thing to use the ENUS URL, but it's only bad if you show if you use that URL for non-English speakers. But how would we how would we be able to tell? We would have to follow back all the referrers and see if the linking page is in English or not. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there is much that we can... Okay. We, we could do stuff here, but I don't think it's a good wise use of our time, of anyone's time. Okay. I think you could write it script, but yeah. It would be a fun project. I'm, it will be a project. I'm not so sure about the fun part. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yak shaving is fun. Shaving through all those web pages, crawling through all those web pages. I think it would be hilarious. You just write a script that does. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you can't it would just crawl though. You have to look, you have to see whether those pages linking to your page are actually in English or not, because that might not be a problem and, uh, if they are in English. So yeah. That's that's a whole can of worms. I, yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> okay. Nope. That I mean that answers the question. I'll 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 report back. I'll give them their answer. All right. Um. Anything else? Anybody want to add anything? Last minute additions, questions, concerns, things you want to talk about? I mean, this is a list that I made up. Anybody else has? Uh, this is just what was on my mind this week. There's there's lots of other things that we're all working on. Which is why you circulate the Etherpad earlier, right? Thank you for doing that. Uh, no, I don't, because my brain is full of Android stuff. OK. All right, well, let's call it a meeting. Sweet. Yeah. Right. Au revoir. Start practicing our French. Thanks, everybody. Bye.